iPhone 16 Pro Max, am I returning it? Hey, what's up? Hope you're doing all right. My name's Matt, this is Dora Creatives, and today I wanna to go over the iPhone 16 Pro Max as a one-ish week review. I've seen a lot of creators lately talk about how they're really disappointed and that they're returning their 16s. In perspective though, they're jumping from the 15 to the 16, and I'm kind of doing this as someone who is moving up from the 12 Pro Max to the 16 Pro Max. Now I bought my 12 Pro Max around the time of the pandemic, so that was around like 2020. I just stepped up in my role of my media and marketing. I had a lot going on and I had a specific purpose for the phone. I did love the phone and I still do love it and I still do use it quite often, just not as my main one. Fast forward to the announcement, I watched that whole thing and on the morning of the pre-order, I almost didn't order it because I wasn't really sure whether it was fully worth upgrading to, especially for the price tag on it. And that's one of my biggest questions is, is this really worth upgrading to? And even since I've had it, done my first impressions video and the unboxing, got it in my hands, the whole experience was a little bit lackluster, but then again, they are phones and they're very minute differences, at least in appearances. Now I'm going to compare that to Apple Watch, which is the Ultra 2. I'm going from having nothing to having that. So the whole experience, I was really excited. I'm still really enjoying it. So it's just one of those things where if you have something the entire time, you really are setting a high expectation of that release. So when you get it, will it meet it? As I said, when I'm going to do this kind of overview and review of this, I'm going to ask someone who is jumping from an older generation. That's not just the immediate older one, but several generations back to the 16 Pro Max. One of the two major selling points that Apple's been pushing is the Apple Intelligence, which we're still waiting on coming maybe fall 2024. And then this right here, which is their camera button, camera shutter button, whatever you want to call it. And as of right now, I'm not really kind of feeling the whole thing. For me, a lot of the time, I'm just going ahead and hitting that out of muscle memory when I pull it out in my pocket, opens up the camera. So I have now just a bunch of random photos or blurry clips of me accidentally hitting it. After about a week and a half of use, I have kind of built my muscle memory a little bit stronger to not hit it every sudden of time. I'm still hitting it pretty often, so it's one of those things I kind of wish that you could lock it, which maybe you can. I'll have to dig into the settings a little bit more when I have the time. See if I can lock it unless I really need to use it. For three of my pros, kind of on the minor pros, let's go over that. First one obviously is going to be this. YouTube, my channel, content creation. Obviously since you're watching this, maybe it was a good idea. And for future uses, I can definitely see now that this platform doing iPhone photography as I've done in the past or more so video is definitely going to be something that is just going to keep on expanding keep on growing. The second thing is going to be the little port on the bottom, USB-C. I really wish that most of these companies which chose over to it only have to worry about one style cable. Just one of those things that makes my life easier. The last thing is going to be battery life. Well, my 12 Pro Max was great. It is slowly decreasing over time. Right now it's about 80% and for me that's something that I have to charge my phone at least once a day. Now for me using the heavy now that's like two, three times. So far with this one, I charge it at night and that's pretty much it. If you are enjoying this, please make sure that you like, subscribe to the channel, helps me engage whether I'm doing the right direction or not, and make sure to leave comments so I can get back to you. I really enjoy seeing everyone comment, leaving their two cents there, and I do my best to respond at any time of question. One of my main reasons is going back to my first minor reason is content creation. So with the photo and video aspect of this camera, it's something that I'm really wanting to test out. I did use it on my 12 for different things for content creation when I was doing media marketing. So why not with this? Right now, I'm primarily using my Fujifilm X100 6 video for that, and my DJI Osmos Black 3, which I'm currently filming on, and I have another video for that. Both of those are 6 and 3 views. But I really want to use this one as my daily driver to be able to capture both of them to see if they can now be more of a solid replacement for those two, or if it's gonna be a combination of the three. And I'm kinda leaning one way already, but I really wanna do that and get my own hands on experience. As a whole, going from 12 to 16, obviously this is a lot more responsive. It's able to handle the payload, I think, quite a bit better. I haven't had any issues with anything freezing or slowing or delaying. The only issue I am having, which may just be me and my learning curve, is when I go ahead and like I have an older reel that I want to grab from Instagram, I'll go ahead and grab that code, throw it into a generic downloader, go ahead and download it, and I get stuck on the page right after you go ahead and open it, choose where you want to save it, and I get stuck on it. It goes full size, plays, and that's it. I gotta figure that out. So again, I don't know if that's me or just something with like this. Never had that problem with my 12. 
The next thing is completely on me. I didn't do enough research. When you're using the styles and tones, obviously you can use that before you take the photos, but I was shooting on raw and didn't know if you wanted to edit that in post and go back into it, try and mess around with it. You have to do that in JPEG or the H or their HEIC file. And I just didn't know that. So if you're having issues trying to access that, that may be why. The other day at the car event that we like to go to, or I like to go to, my wife, eh, Anyway, I got a decent amount of photos there using the different type of camera modes. And I know this for the most part that is on, there goes the train. I know this for the most part that it is pretty on par for the exposure levels. I did have a few that were a little bit under. Maybe I hit the exposure on the camera shutter button. For the most part, it's fine. I've been really dialing in lately and haven't had that issue since. Yesterday, I was going around watching YouTube videos and of course, someone I follow is Creative Ryan. He's actually here in Georgia too, so it's nice to see other creators around. But something that he brought up, which I've had the same problem when I'm doing videos for TikTok or something like that, trying to go in close. When I'm trying to take videos, I'll go ahead and take the video and go near and far, trying to figure that out or trying to get a close up macro. And it jumps between the two cameras, between like the macro mode and the regular one. So when you're doing it, it's not even a smooth jump. They'll just go ahead and jump back and forth. But that's just something to note if you are looking at this and trying to figure it out. You probably have to lock that down just so one of their lenses. In terms of battery life, I know I did mention this earlier. This does have a lot better battery life compared to my 12 Pro Max. And seeing that though, like the other ones at 80% now, I'll charge it two, three times. This one I charge once and it's good. So maybe comparable to back when it was new. I think I only charged it once a day, but it's just one of those things that the battery life definitely has increased, even if it's only a tiny bit. One of the downsides that I guess could maybe not be a downside is that this does use an eSIM. My 12 Pro Max did use a SIM card, but had the option to do an eSIM. But the reason why I like the card is if you ever need to switch phones, between them and i'll give an example when i got my pixel 8 it was sent out to me i was supposed to do a review on it and i'm doing that review i just pop out the sim card from my 12 pro max throw it in the pixel 8 and i'm all set same thing going back or like when my wife's 11 pro max broke she went to my pixel 8 to use temporarily until i was able to fix the screen on 11 pro max but doing it with an eSIM, I'm not really sure about that process. I gotta look into it more. For having a physical SIM, all you do is pop it out, stick the next one, and you're good to go. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. Am I gonna keep the 16 Pro Max? And that's an easy answer, yes. As someone who is upgrading from an older model, it's definitely worth it. Maybe if I was upgrading from the 15, definitely would be hesitant because there really isn't that much more that would get me to jump from the 15 to the 16. So in the end, it is what it isn't. I hope you are all doing well. I know here in Georgia, we had some storms. Up north, they definitely got hammered. And down in Florida, they got hammered with this last one. So I hope you all are doing well and staying safe. I'm going to wrap this up here. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.